Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Stuts, guys. Profile time, yet again. Very excited getting back into this. I haven't done it in so long. I've been working on two lists more than any the last couple of weeks. Already did the profile with Chris on the new Mikanko build that I think is like, is it. I think that's the way to play Mikanko right now. Um, and then today we have World Chalice. Really, really cool profile. I know a lot of people really like World Chalice and Ib getting unbanned is, is pretty big for the deck. It's pretty significant. Um, now, this is not a pure list. I think the pure lists are just not that good. I, I just really don't. I think you have to supplement them with some of the new engines that really help facilitate what, like, to get to their best cards anyway. Because I remember in the old days really struggling sometimes to even open a hand where I could even make Lib at all. Uh, or Ib, for that matter. But, um, yeah, this is, this is World Chalice, Sprite, Runic. Let's get into the list. All right, starting off here with our main deck stuff. We do the uh, World Chalice engine. Boom, there it is. Don't, don't ask me anymore. Don't talk to me anymore. Uh, no, but these are the only monsters you need to play. I was messing around with playing even Unexpected Die and like the two Vanillas, the level three and the level two, because they can help you make Ib uh, easier. But I found the deck gets to Ib. Uh, you either don't need Ib in every combo or... You have other ways to get to it where it's like totally fine. You don't you don't have to. Uh, so this is this totally works um, overall. Uh, you need this to summon off of either uh, li uh, Ib or the Gigantic Sprite because then you search this and then once you discard this for this card's effect, uh, then you're able to actually make Lib because you have to put a World Chalice or World Legacy card in your graveyard before you're even legally allowed to summon Lib. So those are the only two monsters you need. From there. Triple E, Telly, this is just one of the extenders that can either get us level 2 and and help push the sprite engine, or it can get us a level 3 tuner and just make Ib for us. So, really good uh, really good extender piece. Um, I like the utility on this card. Plus, it can just summon uh, a Ghost Ogre on your opponent's turn, which is really funny and cool. Uh, and then for the World Legacy cards that you're you're going for, uh, one Succession and one Awakens. Awakens is your is your interrupt card. This basically is IP Mascarena, the trap card. It just says do a Link Summon on your opponent's turn. And since SP Little Knight came out, this card has significantly been buffed because it's now like two interruptions, uh, two to three interruptions instead of one to two interruptions. It's really good. And then Succession. This is just reborn to a zone a Link Monster points to. Pretty decent extender. Um, it helps you facilitate your combo, and sometimes it's also just good follow up because you can you can get it next turn if you didn't uh, if you weren't able to get to it turn one. It's right engine. This engine, I, I think this and Runic are the two best engines to help the World Chalice uh, deck out right now or facilitate what they want to do. So two Sprite, two Jet, one Red, one Carrot. I know Sprite and Jet are at three. I get it. I'm also on two Starter. I know all three of these are at three. I just found that when I was playing that list, I'm already on 50 cards right now. And playing those like had me closer to 55. And and it, it, it felt like I could see them more often and they're good cards to see, but they're not like absolutely necessary cards to see. They're good, but you can also summon blue off of Gigantic. If you already had access to the World Chalice Engine and you go grab Jet, grab an Interruption, keep it going. Um, they just get a ton of advantage and that works. So... <clears throat> So that's all you really need, in my opinion. I just, like, I think that's plenty. But also seeing, like, too many of these also, like, doesn't help you at the end of the day. Because if you don't resolve Gigantic anyway, it doesn't matter if um, if you do the rest. Like, you, you're you not going to get the World Chalice stuff set up. Nimble package. This package has to be in here since we're on, uh, because of the Sprite stuff, one of the best ways to ever extend in Sprite is, um, is, what the freak is his name? Gigantic. No, no, uh, Sprite Sprint, sorry, Sprint, is Sprint. So Sprint being able to send an Angler and then summon two Beavers from deck, it's one of the best ways to extend. If it's either baiting an interruption or you've already been interrupted by Gigantic and you're able to just like get a bunch of extra free bodies after that and get, make something out of nothing. So in my opinion, you have to play it. Plus this version, no, no normal summons, really. I mean, I guess Lee is technically a normal summon and you can even tribute summon for the... Um, the level five guy, your world legacy world chalice, but this is an actual normal summon that you want to be normal summoning consistently. And also drawing angler isn't bad because we play like 20 runics. So you're always discarding it and you're just summoning two anyway. And it really makes people feel bad for like trying to uh, like hand trap, like hugging. If they're going to imperm hugging, then like you're still summoning two and they just impermed a sprite deck and left them with three level two bodies on field. Like they're asking to be cooked. Uh, okay, Sprite, or uh, sorry, Runic Engine, two Fountain, 
Easy as hell. Uh, three tip. Three curses. Three fire. Three destruction. Three slumber. One dispelling and one smiting storm. Uh, yeah, this is this is runic. I mean, they all kind of do the same thing, but not really. Uh, the the good ones are the good ones. It just is what it is. You'd rather see those, but you need to have enough names so that way consistency is there. Uh, you do want to see two of these in most hands, two to three, uh, which you know ratio wise we're close. I, maybe there's a world where you try to play more, but maybe I'd also rather just cut down some of the other stuff. But honestly, consistency's been pretty good. I'm not going to complain uh, too much about about that. Uh, some, a little bit of spice, one copy of Keldo, one copy of Mudora. I think these cards are really cool. Um, basically you just have a discard every turn because of a runic card. So you can always discard these, uh, even normal summoning them is fine though. If you didn't open another normal summon, you could normal summon them, use a runic to get a two and then link for sprint. And then it gets them in rotation, gets them in grave. And then these cards are dual utility. One, we're walking into a format where, uh, these, uh, snake eye decks are about to have like five, six interruptions, but three or four of those mainly come from the graveyard. So these cards, these cards being able to hit a significant part of your opponent's graveyard. There's a reason why people are siding, um, soul release right now. And these cards basically are, are, you know, a more utility based soul release that you can still play in the main because they're actual interruptions as well. So I think they're pretty cool. And also they help you recycle sometimes only having two world legacy cards in grave, um, being able to, being able to shuffle those backs. That way you can just, you have free ads next turn to just keep grinding. It's really nice. Uh, and then for the, the hand traps, triple droll. I know this is like kind of annoying with, uh, the runic engine, but I still felt like droll is like good enough right now to still play. Uh, cause I can't play too many hand traps in this list. Otherwise, like it's a 50 card list. It gets watered down. Uh, so I wanted something more impactful. Three Ash, it's Ash, one a Ghost Ogre, and then one Gamma. So Ghost Ogre and Gamma are actually your E-Tele targets. If you were wondering that I never showed you an E-Tele target, this is your level three tuner. This is your level two to help you just do Sprite stuff. It's pretty cool. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even play Gamma. But again, if I'm only playing eight hand traps, I'd rather have some hand traps that are actually pretty strong just by themselves. So being able to just draw Gamma or just draw Droll feel like they're decently impactful on their own. Um, to kind of get the job done. So, especially when like runics are so good at breaking boards on their own as well. So that's it for the main deck. Um, 50 cards, I believe right now, moving to the extra. Uh, one Ib, don't need to explain this. You make Ib, Ib's basically one card combo. Uh, Cause you just make gravity controller and then you just, you just do the rest and you get the setup. Um, two Sprite, one Mannequin Cat. I actually like Mannequin Cat quite a bit. This list has come up a little bit in testing. And, uh, like, theorying, especially with, like, um, Snake Eye stuff coming out, being able to reborn a fire and then summon either uh, red or carrot from the deck is really nice. Uh, and then these guys, you need two of these because this is always going to be a hand trap target. So being able to have a second one to be able to make next turn if the first one didn't resolve is very useful. Uh, for links, one grab controller, we talked about that. Uh, for Ib, one sprint. I kind of like the idea of a second sprint for the same idea of gigantic sprite. If the first one gets negated, making another one next turn uh, feels good, but uh, not fully necessary. And it's, you know, you worry about space. Uh, two lib. This card's awesome. This card's always been awesome. It's always been one of the strongest, like, link twos that never really saw that much play outside of, like, a little bit of uh, mech knights, I guess. Uh, competitively, but this card is insanely strong, right? Like it's a plus one, and then it's a it's gonna it's a removal tool that if you can quick link it on your opponent's turn, it's an interruption, a really strong interruption, or it's uh, just a really good removal on your turn. So I like two for the grind to be able to make a second one later, and then link it off and get like another removal in the grind. But um, you definitely have to play at least one. IP and SP, obviously, they go together. Uh, sometimes when you can't get to World Legacy Awakens, you, you just try to make IP, and so that way you can quick SP, because if you link these off, or this off for SP, you get a banish, you get a non-targeting shuffle, and then you still have SP's secondary banish. So just setting that up is three interruptions. It's really solid. One Hita, uh, this is the only charm I have right now, and honestly, this deck doesn't have as easy access to fire monsters as I wish it did. Um, but uh, going into this new format, like, fire is just going to be everywhere. This is, has to be the number one attribute I respect. So if I can make a fire, cool, we'll use this with, with you know, uh, carrot or red. Um, if it's going to be that big of a difference. But we'll see. 
one Avermax, one Appaloosa. I actually really like Avermax overall. He's actually been better for me. Appaloosa is fringe, and I, I honestly would rather replace it for, with something else, but I honestly didn't know what to do. I might play more Runics, but if there are other links or rank twos that are worth playing, I'd love to I'd love you guys to recommend something because I honestly was sitting there and I felt like I had like almost two extra X slots that I was like, mm, kind of open for business, whatever anybody wants to recommend. So I'm open there, but let me know if you think there's anything else that should see play uh, there. And then your two uh, hug in. I like at least two uh, of these. I, I'm not playing any of the others, but like I said, maybe Slepnir needs to be in the deck. Maybe Gary to recover the field spell in certain instances um, could be nice, but... Um, at least these two has to have to be in there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the extra, um, pretty cut and dry. Like, honestly, once you get past like how the world chalice engine works in with, with the rest of this deck, um, it, it kind of becomes a little self-explanatory. So, uh, hopefully this made a lot of sense. Hopefully you guys get it. Um, it's a cool list. I really do. I think this is probably one of those situations where this may be not the best way to play runic or sprite but it's probably the best way to play World Chalice. And I think it's at least Rogue level, just because of how far uh, Sprite and Runic can carry this deck anyway. But uh, I like where it's at. I think it's fun to play. Um, and I think, uh, I think I'd definitely recommend it to anybody who thinks just World Chalice is so insanely cool. Because um, there's definitely some cool stuff here. So uh, that's going to do it for me here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know the thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments on this list. What would you change if you have any suggestions? I'd love to hear that stuff always. But I'm out of here for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff from me down the line. And I'll see you in the next one.